Hey, Mojo Holics, welcome to Inside Watch Mojo, episode 14. I do not have enough fingers for that. So, uh, to, <laughs> to start, we'd like to tell you that we crossed 7.5 million subs on YouTube, which is another nutty number, uh, which means we're basically adding half a million subs every 40 days? That's correct. That's pretty impressive. That's a lot of people. Considering we had uh, half a million subscribers sometime in mid-2013. Right. Not bad. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Uh, so, I guess we had some Mojoholics kind of go bananas over a couple of uh, topics we did recently. Well, I mean, the Mojoholics go bananas all the time. But yeah, every time we do something that's a bit outside of like the sweet spot of these movies and video games, and for example, top 10 cookies or top 10 dog breeds, some of you lose your shit. Now, I would like to point out that something like top 10 dog breeds did better than anything else we published that day. Mm -hmm. And even top 10 cookies, I mean, come on guys, that's just like the next in line. We did fruits, vegetables, fast food, chips. Uh, you, you know, I we're... love those. I love those. Well, the reality is, so here's, this is what's happening guys, right? Um, and you who tune in to watch Inside Watch Mojo, you guys are kind of like, you know, the board of directors. You get the inside scoop, you guys get to set strategy, and then you're the foot soldiers out there kind of relaying the message to the other millions and millions who watch our uh, normal top 10. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> but basically, when you have like 10,000 subs, and then you grow to 100,000 subs, and then 500,000 subs, a million, and now 7.5, your editorial kind of has to evolve. Now we stay true to what you guys love, which is the top 10 list. And yes, some of you are watching this, newly added subscribers saying, what the hell is this crap? Give us top 10 list. But a lot of you are, are always um, you know, asking for us to stay focused on the top 10s and we do that. But we still have to kind of like reflect the fact that as our audience gets more and more mainstream and representative of the universe, or at least the online universe or the universe on YouTube, then it makes sense to not just do movies, not just do video game top 10 lists, but also do the odd top 10 cookies, top 10 dog breeds um, and whatnot. Now, if you take a look at the last 30 days, um, the most popular, care to guess which oh. is the most popular clip in the last 30 days that we've done? Uh, oh God. <laughs> it was a video of your trip when you were in Cuba. No, I'm yeah. kidding. No, okay, I'm wait, kidding, can I have a clue? Yes, it's, um, it involves celebrities. The stupid things, another, st or one of the stupid things I said, dumb things no. said by celebrities? Damn. No, close. It's top 10 good girl celebrities gone oh, bad. Right. So yeah, I mean, we love good girls and we love bad girls even more, but the bottom line is that is a very mainstream topic that a lot of people are gonna care mm -hmm. about. Um, so again, we'll never forget why you guys tuned in, tune in and subscribe, but we're gonna have some outlier clips. That's just, that's what makes us special. Speaking of outlier clips, did you see uh, last week's show with Chris, our new trivia guru? Yes, yes. So Chris, uh, so Chris worked with us in one capacity or another a couple of years ago, and uh, two, three weeks ago when I was on a business trip, he, I guess, he heard us talk about trivia and game shows, and he reached out to me, and I always remembered him in a positive light. Um, so I just said, sure, why don't you come on uh, and join us and see where things go, and so. I, you know, I, just to kind of continue what Chris said, we want to start doing more trivia, factual, and eventually a game show. Uh, we realize that a game show is a big piece to bite off, let alone chew. So we're going to start off with a, you know, more trivia, more fact-based content. Um, and so the idea was for him to produce and host the first trivia show. Uh, so like topics you, where you see Dan, you'll see Chris. Um, I sat in on his pilot and my first reaction and I emailed some of you guys was this is positive I said Chris is crazy. Uh, I love it. It's like, you know Stephen Colbert after you leave him alone with a bottle of vodka and asking him to come out and do his stuff It was great. So you guys some of you guys will love that. It's a lot of personality some of you guys will, will wonder what the hell this is and <laughs> You know, well, you'll never look at the world in the same way, but it, it is entertaining and it makes, you know, usually more dry, factual trivia uh, material actually rather entertaining. We saw the pilot yesterday. What did mm -hmm. you think? I thought it was great. Yeah, I thought it was great. Really funny. Uh, plus, I'm a sucker for trivia, so what are you going to do? That's it. So we're going to do a lot more of those kind of factual trivia-like questions as we build up to eventually doing a game show. Now, we did do a 
poll survey. Mm -hmm. So very briefly, uh, what kind of game shows you guys like? Which, what do you think they like more between Jeopardy, Family Feud, the Mojo Holics? Well, I read it. I read the, the answers. So you could have pretended. Well, that I'm not gonna lie. I'm okay, so lie. so were you surprised by? What I was, was surprised, but only because I love Jeopardy. But it was Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Actually, I wasn't that surprised. It's very popular. It's very popular, and Who Wants to Be a Millionaire to me is kind of like Jeopardy anyway, but Jeopardy more light. mainstream. It's Jeopardy yeah. light. It's for everyone. So there's a multiple choice. There you go. So 26% of you said Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? 23 Family Feud, 21 Jeopardy. Now again, I don't want you get to paraphrase. Um, Anchorman. I don't want you guys to think I'm some kind of kook who lives in an igloo in Canada and makes all decisions based on suggestion polls and results. But I mean, it is important. In the end, the worst kept secret is most entrepreneurs and most you know startups kind of go follow their gut anyway. But it's good to get these kind of results. So to move along, 74% of you said that yes, you would absolutely dial in or Skype or hang out, FaceTime with us to be on the show. Were you surprised? No. Would you think, would you, did you think that would be higher or did you think 74 was actually? Uh, no, I think that's a good number. That's a good number, yeah. three out of four. Yeah. Um, most of you said Skype, 53%, then FaceTime, then Hangout, 13% 13 said Other. Uh, we'll skip the categories because it was pretty much split more yeah. or less. 89% uh, of you said yes, absolutely, produce a game show, don't just focus on top tens. 95% uh, of you said you would watch. I was very happy to hear that. We'll hold you to that. <laughs> yes, we will hold you to that. Uh, on the who would host the game show, a few interesting things. I think we kind of knew, I thought you would get like 60% of the votes, Dan would get 30% of the votes, and then 10% would be the other. More or less, 27% said Rebecca, 18% said Dan, 12% said Ash, 5% said Matt, 3% said Chris, which just goes to show people like what they're familiar with. Yeah. That's really all that proves. Um, and what was interesting is 17% said other YouTubers. So, mm. are we going to follow this? Where's the shredder? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we are going to take this into consideration, that's why we ask, and we will run a poll, mm. which we've not yet created, asking you for some names of the trivia show and the FAQ show that we're working on. Is there a on. front runner there? I like facts, F-A-Q-X, okay. which sounds weird, but it kind of follows with topics, but we might, anyway. It'll all be explained <laughs> somewhere on the link underneath. Okay. Uh, I have AMA Reddit here, and I think this has to do with me. Yes, yes, yes. So basically <laughs> someone on Reddit asked for a Ask Me Anything with Rebecca. So I think there's only like a dozen or so of upvotes. So I'm bringing yeah. this up to you, Mojoholics. The link will be below as okay. well. If you guys want to do an Ask Me Anything with Rebecca on Reddit, you will have to share that, spread it. And I don't know what the number is, but if it gets high enough, then we will contractually force Rebecca to do that. No one has asked me to do this, so there you go. Go. And for the record, I cannot contractually <laughs> obligate anyone to do anything, despite what you might Whatever, say. I'll do it. Um, also, you may have noticed that we have introduced a while ago, actually, um, some new graphics in our videos, right? Yes, so yeah. next week I won't be on, uh, it'll be one of one or two other people. Uh, it might be Derek, not finalized yet. Oh, Derek does Allen, he know that? <laughs> well, he, he will now if he's listening <laughs> to us do this. So he may come on and talk about a number of things. You guys saw Mike who talked about our freelance writer team. Derek manages uh, our freelance video editors. And Derek, of course, used to be in front of the camera, mm -hmm. Derek Allen. We still get emails sometimes, whatever happened to Derek Allen. He is still part of the team. He's risen up the ranks. And uh, so he may be on to talk about many things, including the HD stuff. Oops, go on. Okay, uh, another day at Watch Mojo to follow up the intro to the Awkward series. So, uh, yes. skits. <clears throat> Well, it's not, okay, so again, if you go back to that era when Derek was in front of the camera, believe it or not, when we launched in 2006, we did everything, as you guys know, we also did skits. Now, we're not gonna start doing skits, it's kind of a distraction, we wanna focus on, on top 10 lists, but when we launched the Awkward series, mm -hmm. we did an intro to that series where we basically did what was for all intents and purposes like a short, it was a skit. Um, it, our intention wasn't really to do many more of these, but it was basically like another day at Watch Mojo where we kind of just laugh at ourselves really and prove that we have way too much time on our hand. So we will follow that up with another one to be published next week. When you guys see that and your fellow Mojoholics go, what the hell is this? We kindly ask you to just explain to them and that's pretty much it. Okay, last thing, uh, we have two more job openings. Yeah, these two are for full-timers in Montreal. One would be someone just to help out with administration and whatnot, finance, boring stuff. And the other one would be um, someone to eventually come on board to do human resources. Again, we've grown, there's a lot of people and we need help with that. So more on the serious side of the company, but again, if those, if you know someone or if you do that kind of stuff and you want to be in a creative environment, then that may be the job for you. Does that mean we're going to have to start like behaving in meetings? 
I hope not, <laughs> because then I may resign, so yeah. All right, so to change the subject a little bit, we have some suggestions that need your help, so check these out. Top 10 anime worlds we wish were real, top 10 anime chefs, and top 10 strangest animes. Well, that's a lot of anime today. We're but... sadists or masochists, whichever one is <laughs> inflicting pain on ourselves. So. Yes, that. Anyway, I'm working on top 10, uh, it's a series actually, top 10 memorable TV characters of 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and 2010s, all different lists. That's a lot of lists. That's a lot of lists. I wonder what the number one would be. For which year? Like, if we were doing like the all time list, I feel like Homer Simpson would be high. I feel like, I don't know, the honeymooners? Like, Fred you guys can chime in as well. Nothing. You guys can chime in. I'm working on top 10 political impersonations on SNL. Uh, who's your favorite of all time? Sarah Palin. Either, yeah, George W. Bush by Will Ferrell, which was pretty funny, or any one of those by Dana Carvey. I really liked uh, Daryl Hammond's Bill Clinton. Gore. Gore was very good too. No, but I think, actually, you know what? Daryl Hammond, Bill Clinton, probably yeah. for many reasons, number one. It's very good. Those were the years I watched a lot of SNL, yeah. so. Uh, so last week we had Chris Mason on, and he helped me out with the trivia, and he uh, came up with a more complicated question that I could ever come up with. Uh, which involved Apsara dancers and what their native food would be. So, there were four possible an answers and I will give you the correct one. It is Samlor Kako, or ka Kako, I don't know how to pronounce it, which is a fish soup that comes from Cambodia, which is the home of Apsara dancers, evidently. So, congratulations to San Felix, otherwise known as at Madre Sen, who got the answer right. There were a lot of people who got the answer right, so I'm very impressed. But there you go. I would so, have failed Professor Mason's <laughs> class for sure. I yeah. would not have gotten that. No, it's the, that's the other thing. Uh, that's one thing I got out of watching the pilot. I am going to do badly at it. Yeah, well, Chris is intense. Yeah, it's good. Um, which is good, I don't like easy trivia. Anyway, don't forget to email us at contest at watchmojo.com to claim your prize and send us your shipping info. See, guys like easy girls, they just don't like easy trivia. I'm sorry, that's just wrong and inappropriate. Go HR on. department, yes, I'm gonna start taking go. notes. I'm gonna start taking I think that's why we need an HR department because I don't think I should be running HR anymore. <laughs> no comment. Anyway, so we also had a comment uh, contest last week for our Canadian fans uh, because we have six Blu-ray copies of Into the Woods to give away. However, we had a grand total of zero entries. Are you guys there? Are you listening? Is <laughs> so, it cold? Your ears are frozen? What's let's happening? Let's try it again. I did come up with a finally a good one for the cold cuts, and not even the cold cuts. It was actually, if it, it was, was cheese. It was cheese, sorry, <laughs> that's what I mean. If we would have, instead of cold cut, uh, instead of cheese, the cold cuts, I would have gone with black forest gum. Right. Which was still not good, but better than the feta one I threw out. And then was... somebody had the joke. Isn't that just called radio? Yeah, well. Mm. Anyway, um, I love that show. <laughs> So, uh, it was, we were asking you guys about your favorite fairy tales. So, this week we'll try it again, but we'll kind of spice it up a bit. So, since, since it's for our Canadian fans only, we are asking you guys to come up with the title of your Canadian fairy tale. So, I have a few examples. Some are better than others. I came up with some of them. That's why they're not so good. So, uh, we have uh, The Pied Piper of Hamilton, uh, Little Red Riding Toque, the Princess and the Puck, or Snow White and More Snow. Oh, that was actually... Yeah, that, that's Christmas, that's, there you go. Yeah. Uh, so don't forget the hashtag WM question, and uh, we need, how many? Six people to enter, at least, so please do that. So I would, I would say instead of Miracle, Lucky Americans. It's not a bad one. Yeah, <laughs> I get you, I see what you did there. Not a fairy tale, but what are you gonna do? Yeah, not a fairy tale. Well, actually, yeah. No, it is for them. It is, yeah. Anyway, uh, comment of the week. So. By the way, the NHL playoffs are starting, so everybody's a bit tense right now, <laughs> if you get the hockey I reference. have like five Habs jerseys over there by my desk. So anyway, comment of the week has absolutely nothing to do with the uh, NHL playoffs. <laughs> so uh, after we thank the users who suggested the idea for top 10 cookies on that video, LexPro left this gem. Thanks, WatchMojo. Now I know who to kill. And scene. See you guys next week. Go Habs, go.